Oh, wow. That's right. This is what it looks like in natural sunlight. Oh, I haven't done one of these shows during the day in a while. Hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo Tom. If I look distracted, that's probably because I is, I am. Um, I knew this show had to go up because I know my YouTube audience demands content. Um, I'm also kind of working right now on my computer. You can't see that. Which is probably a good thing. Because that would, I'm sure, break all kinds of confidentiality stuff. But who knows on my other job? I don't know. I have to go to work at a weird hour on Sunday. And who knows what happens tomorrow. I might not have a job after tomorrow. I wouldn't be that concerned about that one. But that's a whole different... Because heaven knows you can't can't survive on 23 hours a week times 10.30 yeah um, oh we don't need to go into my financial situation well, what am I doing I'm here not to talk about finances although I do have to figure out what the I'm doing my taxes that's important oh well you know what I'm here to talk about some NXT Oh boy. oh boy one big takeaway oh wait I have a thank you to give out Mr. Azerbaijan guess what sir you're being bumped up instead of being on the thank you list you sir for Easter are going to be part well you're going to be part of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League now so you can look forward to seeing yourself in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight thank you very much for your comments and your insight there on the Discord thing is actually very much appreciated. So every couple of minutes I do have to kind of look distracted and get that done. Yeah, because this is, that's a good paying job. This YouTube stuff pays nothing yet, I hope. But yeah, let's talk about NXT. Mr. Azerbaijan, he's, again, if you want to be like him, find me on Discord. Send me a bunch of likes, or subscribe. Send a bunch of comments too. That's always good. Or even send me an email. That reminds me. I have to. I have to check that email account. I have to check that email account so much more frequently than I do. I just don't. Um. With all that being said, let's get to NXT. Wow. A whole bunch of these matches. Minus two, probably three matches. Could have actually been the main event. I'm kind of shocked by that. So let's start off this card. We start off with Tomasa Ciampa and Rex Steiner. I refuse to call him by his loser name of Braun Breaker. It's Rex Steiner. One day I want to see Big Papa Pump Daddy. Or uncle and the dog faced uncle show up to NXT. I only, I only did one day. I think when he won, won his belt. But I want to see them on TV. That would be cool. Again, heroes of mine. Back in the day, Rick Steiner used to be part of the varsity club. Scott Steiner, the younger brother. Again, Steiner, Scott Steiner, known for his promos and being a ring announcer in TNA. That's hilarious. Um, they took on the Dirty Dogs with Dolph Ziggler and glorious Robert Roode. Um, so they just jumpstart the match. I also got home like two minutes late. It took me two minutes to turn on the computer, get things going. I just saw like Rex Steiner beating up people and Tommaso Ciampa getting beat up. I still think Tommaso Ciampa and Dolph Ziggler do not necessarily like each other. Or if they don't at least for this match they got their differences set aside uh Tommaso Ciampa and Steiner they're also in matching gear I've always liked that for tag teams uh one of the big moves I saw was a catch spine buster oh wow um Dolph Ziggler hit the zigzag early on Rick Steiner on Rex Steiner, uh, Steiner kicked out though. 
pretty easily. Rex, he was taking a lot of the brunt, which makes sense considering that just the day before they were off in Cleveland. Well, not, not Cleveland, but somewhere in Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, the hometown of Alexa Bliss where she didn't show up. So, yeah. Um, so, that was good. But he was taking a lot of the punishment. Uh, that makes sense. Rude. Hit the glorious elbow drop. From the... I forget. I think it was the second rope elbow drop. Via Hitman. Brett the Hitman Hart. Ciampa gets a hot tag. He goes corner to corner with his clotheslines. He had a double clothesline. There was no fairy tale ending for he ate a glorious spine buster from Robert Roode. Dolph got slingshot out of the ring. Dolph sells so ridiculously. So good. At most times. Sometimes, uh, not so much. But um, Steiner got then they brawl to the outside. Steiner gets thrown into the crowd. Someone gets to go home with some Rick, Rex Steiner on them. Um, Steiner back in the ring, hit the belly to belly. And that looked absolutely amazing. Had the Steiner line. And he, I mean, he actually has a really good spear. He might have a better spear than Goldberg and Roman Reigns. Eventually they hit the Doomsday Bulldog. Dolph eats the fairy tale ending. Tommaso Ciampa really wanted to do that. And I can see how the fairy tale ending is different from the pedigree. Whereas the fairy tale ending it's like an underhook neutralizer. So you have the guy underhooked instead of driving him down, kind of fall forward. That looks pretty cool. This, oh, I'll tell you what, oh, I probably shouldn't do it this early, but last night I was so happy. It was Mardi Gras. I was imbibing in tequila and root beer. You know what? I'll stay with what I wrote down. I'm going to bet my lip on something. But you know what? This was a filet mignon match. And we have L.A. Knight, Eli Drake. Oh, so good. Cut a pros on Grayson Waller. That's, that, that was... Oh. L.A. Knight's quickly becoming one of my favorite wrestlers for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I knew him as Eli Drake in the NWA. And before that in Impact Wrestling. He has all the charisma. Again, I think that happens. But with prof some professional wrestlers, their, their, their physicality is here. Like when you start off professional wrestling, normally you're, you're a lot more physical than you, than you have promo ability. Very few times when it's the opposite. But then generally it begins to even up because age creeps up on you. Eli Drake still looks amazingly spectacular. But his promo ability... Ashia sees his physicalness, physicality, which is great though. Uh, so then, so again, that was just great. Uh, then we had Persia, Peralta, and Indy Hartwell. They're in matching gear, they're distracted. Yeah. Persia wants to get with Duke. So this is going to lead to their next match, which is a dusty. A women's Dusty Cup match. I don't know what to think about this. Because this is weird. It was Wendy and Dakota Kai taking on Indy Hartwell and Persia Peralta. I don't know what it is about Wendy. There's just a disconnect there. First of all, I don't know how you can wrestle in a onesies. You must get so hot and sweaty underneath that. It just doesn't look comfortable. 
I mean, I, I don't know. For whatever reason, this match did not tick off any bells for me. Although it was, for the most part, botch-free. I mean, Wendy knows how to wrestle. I, I can't take away her wrestling ability. It's just that her her look her look is terrible. I don't even know how else to put it. It's just I don't know. A fuzzy onesies in a grown woman. That's not even character based. Like I know they had Ruby Soho wear a Bucky Beaver outfit. That at least you could say you know what at least that's a Bucky Beaver outfit. This is just like a sleeping onesies. Like something you wear when you're like, I don't know. I stopped wearing onesies like, I guess when I was like five or something. So yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, uh, indeed. She had a good sidewalk slam. Kind of got tagged in. Um, Wendy and Dakota Kai, they do some tag team kicks. That was pretty cool. Uh, a, a two on one slapjacks, always good to see. Um, it's just that onesie is way too distracting for this match. Uh, Wendy does get stretched, and then there's like a combination top rope Vader bomb. And. Uh, coup de gras. Uh, when you did the top rope Vader bomb. Uh, Dakota Kai hit, hit the coup de gras, the, the double stomp. Wendy and Dakota Kai win. And where does this leave Indy Harlow and Persia Peralta? I wonder if they're going to do the very trope thing. Where because of Indy's distracted... With her husband, Dexter Loomis, and Persia Peralta is getting some from, is, is distracted with Duke. I wonder if that's going to lead to a breakup. I don't know. We'll see. I'll tell you what, though. That onesie's just killed it, though. It was a can of soup match. I, I don't, I, I don't even care. I'm meaning to care less and less the older I get for some reason. Um, then we had I'll tell you what, this was a this was a horrible match. This was Lash Legend versus Amari Miller. Miller's doing good for the most part. But this was way too short. And then she, I don't know, Lash Legend's finisher is like a twisting spine buster. Um, Amari Miller also took a bad bump to the outside of the ring at one time. I don't know. It's, it's just... I don't know. I don't know what to say. It was just weird. It was way too short. Didn't flow. It didn't really flow that much. It was just short. You know what? Lash Legend's not that great. Amari Miller, she probably has some potential. I could see this as a TV house, as, as well, not a TV, not a TV match, but as a house show match. But this match, folks, this was a piece of toast. And then we had Briggs and Briggs and Jensen. And uh, the one, I, I can't even tell the two, two apart. He was talking about her truck. And it, she was hot. I wouldn't have talked about trucks with her. She, she said, you don't know how to handle a real woman. Yeah, he's only talked to lesbians before. They agree with anything. Because they don't care. Because they don't care. Yeah, so I don't know, that was just weird. And then, again, we had a uh, Solo Sokoa interview. Oops! Oops! Um, Solo Sokoa versus Gunter. Um, and Uso versus Walter. 
I'm not a fan of the name change, but you know what? I'll tell you what, this is another match that honestly could have been on as a main event. I'm like, wait a second, why are they having all these main event matches? Are they like, do they really need all these promo stuff? Do they need the um, rating stuff for Tuesdays? Oh, that's so weird. That goes in there. That ticket should go on the door one day. Actually, I'm going to put that ticket on the door. Look at what I found. I found an old Daytona Cubs ticket. This is going up. That's going up on the door of wrestling. Door of wrestling hasn't had anything added to it in a while. It needs some more, more stuff on it. Yeah, this was an, a hard-hitting match. Gunther. Oh, he was just ready for a fist fight. He lost some weight. He had some big clubbing blows. I like the fact that every time Solo Sokoa, he would get like two chops in and would kind of rattle Walter. But again, it would just, Walter would come back. Oh, a massive chop of his own. And Solo Sokoa would, would, would go down. Um, and then he did the leg twist neck neck crank. I haven't seen that in a while. That's an old school British world of sport wrestling move. Solo always tried. He was always trying to make his comeback. He get a couple shots in, but then Walsh was just too big and too strong. So it just uh, he put him in the in the Boston Crab. That looked vicious again. Every time Solo tries, Walsh had to think. Walsh had to counter for it. Although he did eventually get the leg larry, and he got Walter up in the Simone drop. That is impressive. Uh, there was a splash to the outside. And then, in typical Uso fashion, super kick party time! Uh, but Gunther, eventually, he applied the sleeper. And then, and then he powerbombed him, one, not once, but twice, for good measure. Oh, this was a good match. I'm really tempted to give it a flaming yawn. Should I, folks? Yeah, let's. Yeah, you know what? Flaming yawn match. Yeah, send that to my. I have someone who knows a hell of a lot more about this. Do that. But yeah, um. No, we had a Dolph interview. Harlan was there. Actually, I like this Harlan thing. This is pretty good. He was taking on Draco Anthony. Or, well, well actually, there was a Dolph interview. Then there was a little Harlan thing in the background with him. What's his face? And, and, then, and then Persia. Yeah. She's ready to get it on with Duke. There's going to be some sweet loving going on tonight. And when that ring, when those lights go off and Persia slinks into that ring and Duke Hudson coyly stands at one corner. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Harlan versus Draco Anthony match. This was a near squash match, but this was actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> like Harlan just beats up poor Draco Andrews. Um, Andrews falls down as a front bump, splash to the back. Near legit fits, fists. They looked vicious in the corner. Uh, poor Draco got stretched on top of the turnbuckle. Draco had his little comeback, but yeah. Then then it was the head to the mat, and, and that was the end of that. And then he just finished with really just a big backdrop. The ending was kind of disappointing. Harlan wins, and then he picks him up. Just when you think he's going to beat him up more, he hugs him. Indeed. Uh, I'll tell you what, this was a good match, even though a squash match. It's a ham sandwich match. There was a little Carmelo Hayes interview because that's that was the main event, which was kind of a disappointing main event. 
Then it was Raquel Gonzalez and Cora Jade taking on Leon and Frez. I'll give them this much. Um, this match was was really potchy. Leon and Frez are really green. They're really off when they're not dancing around. Leon and Frez look absolutely amazing. And I can't appreciate the fact that at least NXT tried to do something Mardi gras on Mardi Gras. So yeah, um, Leon, she had a headlock with a blind tag for us. I don't know. And then it just started to get boshy. I don't know whose fault it was. Um, and at the very beginning point, I'm like, these two jobbers, they're not good. Again, not necessarily a, a TV matchup. This is one of those things where I think... The house show circuit is hurting the NXT product because the wrestlers are not getting exposure before they go on TV. Like, it's one thing to do it in front of, like, an audience where people will be like, whoa, they suck. It's another thing where, where, where you're going to be on TV and everyone's going to see that you're not good. But yeah, but I'll tell you what. Um, they came back because they had a pop-up splash to the outside. She, she taught, uh, Leon got tossed Frez up. She cleared the ropes. And you just literally watch her go up and up and up. It was pretty amazing, actually. Um, uh, Core Jade. Actually has a pretty good Orton-esque power slam. Again, I'm always impressed by that. Uh, Raquel caught, I think Leon just kind of ragdolled her. I think Raquel <laughs> used Cora Jade as a weapon, and, and, that's, and that's how they won. So, so, so that was pretty good. Um, despite all the boshiness, this is still a ham sandwich. And then for some reason backstage it was like meet the mean girl versus the anime girl. Because the anime girl had on like some necklace and all the other girls were like, ooh, that's so pretty. Then the mean girl said, no, you don't want that. You don't want one of my necklaces. I'm like, this is nonsense. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> As I get a message back, probably scroll down more, but who knows? Yeah. So it's Mean Girl versus Anime Girl. I don't know. They're just like pulling random people off. Then we had Andre Chase versus Von Wagner. Um, again, probably actually this match wasn't bad. Um, this is kind of a, Andre Chase was upset because Von Wagner beat up his student. This is a teachable moment. The teacher should always stand up for a student. Uh, Andre. Ooh, what was that noise? Ooh, that's what. I'll do that one next. That was pretty neat. My computer made noises. But yeah, um, he does some clothesline, some stomps. Give me an A. Stomp. Give me an N. Stomp. You get the gist of it now. Uh, Wagner goes into the post. However, Von Wagner... He just says, you know what, that's, that's enough of that. Um, hit some over, he had like an overhead F5 eventually on Andre Chase. Andre Chase lost. Not a bad match. I'll actually give this a cheeseburger rating. Then we had a Nikita Lines promo. I just want to see her in that outfit again. I don't care. Uh, then we then in our then in the real main event because we had two other matches that could have been main events we get to the real main event and it was semi disappointing. Um, it was Carmelo Hayes versus Peter Dunn. 
Peter Dunn taking it to Carmelo to the begin. They begin to trade clotheslines. They just begin to trade shots. They like clothesline each other simultaneously. Man, it was okay. Um, Carmelo hits a big insecurity. And put, the, and put those shots by Dunn. Oh, they're so good. Peter Dunn goes for a triangle. Um, Carmelo Hayes is a slingshot. Now he starts to do. Now he puts Peter Dunn into the cross face. Uh, Peter Dunn, in order to break it, does the finger snap. I don't know how that doesn't tear something. Uh, then. Again, Hayes, he has that suplex neck breaker. Trick Williams tried to get involved. He gets his fingers broken. Eventually, Pete Dunn gets shoved off the top rope. This lets Carmelo Hayes hit a guillotine leg drop onto Peter Dunn. Carmelo Hayes retains his belt. I'll tell you what. This was a surf and turf match. And that was NXT. You know what? Any one of these matches could have been, I think, at least the the Tommaso Ciampa Rex Steiner match. Rex Steiner match. Gunter versus. Let me shoot back into my notes. Solo Sokoa could have been a main event match. And the Carmelo Hayes Peter Dunn could have been a main event match. Everything else was meh. So yeah, you know what? A pretty good show for NXT. Um, rest of the week, I'll be putting up a video probably again tomorrow for AEW. I'm about a day behind, which isn't too bad. Uh, Thursday, I'm going to be doing two videos. Actually, yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. What am I saying? I don't know. Maybe today I'll do two videos. Who knows? But predictions! I have to invite some guests over. It's either going to be the AEW Revolution or the Impact Sacrifice. I have to kind of make my guesses soon. But yeah, it'll be... And then, <laughs> depending when I get off of work, who knows when that's going to happen. Um, maybe I'll do a Friday show for the AEW Rampage. Who knows? We'll see. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm going to get back to work. And I'm also going to check my email for a change, too. So, everyone have a good day. I hope, and again, don't forget, even though I can't get them, um, if you are Catholic, don't forget, to, don't forget your ashes. It is Ash Wednesday. It's the start of Lent. I start giving up stuff. No more soda. No more beef. No more animal. No booze. No gambling. I probably, I'll, I'm going to try not to call scantily dressed women hookers and whores and who knows what's going to happen this sunday at work again i'd like to thank everyone for watching please like share comment subscribe and i'll see everyone later bye